All right. Hello and welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for attending the Yes Bangladesh webinar for Yes POs. My name is Gloria King, and I am the Yes Program Manager here at Iron USA. We're really excited for this opportunity to have our local country partners, as you can see right here, uh, personally share out about their country, the selection process, PDO prep, their team and alumni, in the hopes that this will better inform all of the great work that you do to place our YES students and support them during their exchange year. As one of the YES ROs who gets to work more closely with the students once they become alumni in their communities, we can really confidently say that the students' lives and their the lives of many in their community are changed in immeasurable ways, and for that, we know that we have the POs to thank. So thank you so much for providing these life-changing opportunities for our youth all over the world and really impacting the world in a positive way. Before we begin, I just want to go over a quick review for some of the features in this webinar room so that you can all comfortably navigate and participate seamlessly. In the chat box settings, you should see that there are two features for all panelists and all panelists and attendees. If you could just make sure that your chat settings are set to all panelists and attendees, this way everybody in the room will be able to see what you are sharing in the conversation. We also encourage you to please chat, add commentary, and ask questions throughout the great presentation. We are also going to have a couple of uh, polls so we have for you a sample question very quickly. Great. And this is our first poll question. It's welcome. How are you involved in the YES program? So if you want to go ahead and share out about your role in the YES program. I do also want to mention that we are recording this webinar, so if you want to watch it again or you want to share it out with your colleagues, we will be sharing out the link to the video on YouTube. Wonderful. So we have some poll results. We have the majority being peer representatives, a lot of local coordinators, and even some host family members and volunteers. That's wonderful. Very quickly, I'll also go through the list of everyone who's participating in the webinar. I know you aren't able to see the participant list, but hopefully this will give you a sense of maybe if you have some colleagues in the room with you right now. We have Burkena Samara, Jessica Fitzsimmons, Juliette Van de Geer, Katrin Muller, Carrie Anderson, Kristen Taylor, Lucia Brown, Lara Co Lauren Koch, Lisa Shader, Molly Kadari, Nancy Sanderson, Roxanne Lau, and Stephanie Benton. Great. And if you want, just want to comment again very quickly with your name and PO, making sure that your chat settings are set to all panelists and attendees, then everyone else can see who is here. Wonderful. So do we, today we have joining us, I'm so happy uh, to say, Wasi, Musu, Prince, and Munif to share out about Yes Bangladesh. Great. Munif, please take it away. Thank you, Gloria. Um, good evening from Dhaka, Bangladesh. It's 8 p.m. here, 8.06 p.m. here. Um, I don't know what was the time at your place, probably um, morning or afternoon. But anyways, welcome. Um, today, um, in our presentation, we're going to cover a few things, and you can see them on your screen right now. Um, the first thing is the staff introduction. And then the country, uh, we're going to talk about our country and then the selection process. We're also going to talk about the PDO prep. And we're also uh, going to talk about what our alumni members are doing. And finally, we'll have the question and answer session when uh, the PO and the LCs can ask questions to us and we can um, answer. Um, answer the questions. So moving to the next slide. Um, in Iron Bangladesh, we have five members working right now. Um, first of all, I need, I need to uh, mention um, Mr. Wasi, Nob Wasi Mahmoud Moni. Uh, he is a program director of Iron Bangladesh and he's working uh, with the YES program since 2005. 
Um, he was also an IVLP alum. Uh, he's also an IVLP alum. He went there back in 2010. Uh, we have uh, Mustasin Islam, uh, who is also the YES program manager in Bangladesh. And he, he himself was a uh, YES, uh, he himself went to the YES program back in 2007. Um, Gulshan Jubat Prince, uh, he is the program assistant, and he went to the YES program back in 2010. And myself, uh, Munif, uh, I am working as an inter internship supervisor here at the Iron Beauty, and I went uh, to Iowa um, during my YES program uh, back in 2011. So welcome again. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a brief overview about like the culture, how the culture is like, and how um, what what is the setting of of our country. Um, we we are we have majority. Muslim population, which is 83%. The second um, in percentage is Hinduism. And we have other faith groups uh, in our country. And, um, and they include some Baha'i faiths, uh, some Sikhs, and some other indigenous tribal um, religions. So as you can see that the, the influence of the Muslims uh, is very high. And since this was like a major trade zone, we have received um, cultural influences from the Arabs, from the Portuguese, from the British, and from other, other people, uh, other, other ethnic groups. So we are kind of like a mixed race. So we have inherited our um, culture from so many different uh, cultures around, around, the, around the globe. Um, but the strongest influence would be the Indian uh, influence because we were part, we are part of the Indian subcontinent. Um, the language that we speak here, which is our mother tongue, is Bangla. And uh, in the Western world, they know, they know our language as Bengali. And the society that we live in, it's a um, uh, patriarchal, patriarchal society. And there is a hierarchy there um, in terms of age. Um, social position, status, and also sex, as it is a patriarchy. So, so with that, with those, uh, we see certain. Um, we have inherited certain etiquettes, or we have developed certain etiquette, um, and, and and also we, I would say cultural norms. Um, one of them is we eat with our with our fingers. We eat with our hands, and which is oftentimes um, a little uh, weird to a person who are used to um, uh, you who are used to uh, with uh, with uh, silverware and other other um, means. Um, we also wash our hands before and after um, properly. Without washing our hands, we never eat food. Um, and when we're eating in a, in a group, um, if we ask for silverware, uh, it is oftentimes considered as rude. Um, also, as, as it comes to the age, the hierarchy of age, um, when we're sitting in the table, we don't, um, we don't start eating if the eldest person um, starts eating. So you can see that, um, we have like very high respect for the people who are old and who are, who are our elders. Um, and we, we also have, we are also very really polite in a sense and we show our politeness by saying no a lot, which is sometimes um, a little different in the US because in the US, if somebody's giving me something, uh, for an example, food, um, if I'm not hungry, I can just say that, oh, I'm not hungry. Um, and they would understand that, and that won't, won't be rude. But in, in, in my country, in our country, um, when, we, when somebody gives us food, we always have to say, no, oh, no, 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 I don't want any more. I cannot have any more. And that is polite from me. And that person would consist, uh, will be insisting to have food, and that, that person will forcefully uh, put, put food on our plate. And that would be polite from that person's side. So you can see that we have um, a different kind of uh, interaction going on when it comes to uh, politeness 
uh, we are oftentimes not very direct about uh, certain things. Um, <clears throat> another thing is the personal space, which most, most of the yes students who go to the US from Bangladesh, they have faced. Um, we make small talks or we, in our introductory conversation with somebody, we oftentimes ask about, oh, are you married? Or oh, do you have kids? Or, uh, oh, where do you work? Oh, how much salary do you get? Oh, how much does your house cost? How much does your uh, car cost? You know? So those are like um, introductory uh, talking, <laughs> talking elements for, for us. But as a, oftentimes the Bangladeshi students go to the US and then they face this uh, cultural uh, shock. Um, by asking those questions because that is kind of like um, a private question to the Americans. So, so that is something that we, we have faced as exchange students and we have seen that the exchange students from Bangladesh are usually face those kind of challenges when they go to the US in their exchange program, uh, exchange year. Another, another part is, uh, is that the government of Bangladesh, uh, they, um, they promote nationalism and patriotism uh, to an extent um, um, that the students oftentimes grow up uh, reading textbooks where uh, they have a certain version of their history. Um, also, the, the movies and um, the, the, the TV serials and the drama and the celebration of the national uh, holidays that they um, that they uh, celebrate in our country. Oftentimes those are also very linked with um, our um, liberation war and also our language movement. So, <clears throat> so uh, when our students go to the US, um, and since you know that we had a, uh, had a war back in 1971 with the, Pakistan, with the Pakistan, with the country Pakistan, which was previously known as uh, West Pakistan and our country was previously known as East Pakistan. So these two wings of Pakistan with India in the middle, um, uh, we had to go through a violent war to, to get separated from each other. And, and a new country was born, which, which is Bangladesh. So there was this rivalry back, back then, and maybe there are some hints of it now as well. Um, but that, is a very sensitive issue when it comes to that because most of uh, the people who fought for our country, um, they were farmers, they were regular people, they were guerrillas uh, from, uh, from the village. Um, and, and, and their next generations are probably the fathers and mothers of the YES students that are currently going to the US. So you can see like this is also like a sensitive part of our history and a big part of our history that we cannot avoid. Um, other than that, um, um, if you have any questions regarding the culture part, uh, I would ask you to note them down. Uh, we, we will have a question and session at the end. Um, and we would, we would like to uh, answer the questions at the end of the um, presentation. And also if my team members, uh, Mr. Wasi, Mr. Mushtu and uh, Prince, if they have questions, I would ask them to note them down. If they have to add anything, I would ask them to note them down uh, so that we can, uh, so that I, I don't miss anything. So moving on to the selection process. <clears throat> uh, previously, we used to do everything uh, manually. Uh, we used to go to different uh, districts and different divisions of the country uh, and we used to uh, go there and present and um, we used to get physical applications uh, coming to Dhaka because Dhaka is our headquarters. Um, so from all these divisions, applications would come, physical applications, and then we would uh, manually check them and everything and then um, we would follow the selection process uh, manually. But last year, what we did is we brought, um, I would say a revolutionary change here because for the first time we have introduced uh, technology with our, uh, in our uh, application uh, selection process. Um, also the government of Bangladesh is currently working for uh, digitalization of the country. So uh, the tech industry or the technology is getting uh, very high priority. 
uh, by the government. So the government is trying to incorporate, uh, trying to encourage all the businesses and all the organizations to um, start incorporating technology with with their um, processes, with their systems. So in that in 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 that. Um, so to move forward in that way, so we started doing that. So we developed a system and we call it ATS. Um, with this system, what we did is we have allowed um, students from all over the country. There are um, eight divisions of the country um, and the divisions are further broken down into districts and sub-districts. Um, so from eight divisions, we have opened the application, uh, application, uh, process, uh, application form, and we have received the applications digitally as well as manually because this was our testing, uh, testing, testing period this year. And we have received a record-breaking number of applications this year, almost close to six, uh, 700. And thanks to the technology, because the technology actually, um, it was so automatized that it, um, it checked all the requirements of the application and it told, it gave us the results automatically. Like, okay, this many applications are unsuccessful. This many applications are successful because they uh, meet all the requirements that you have asked for. So that, that was kind of like easy process that made our lives easier um, um, this time um, when we were, we were doing the application processes. Before we started, uh, before we opened the preliminary application, what we did, did is we we actually divided the country into eight different zones which is which which are the eight divisions and then we have assigned the team members and the volunteers so that they can go and physically promote as well so they went to different uh, parts of the country they promoted yes program and all all of the volunteers were ex students of uh, were the alumni members so um, they went many of them went to their own school uh, so after after their exchange year, probably that was the first time they were going to their schools, and um, they kind of like they kind of like um, acted as a figure that oh this student I saw this student in my school last year and I can see a completely different person now. So the U.S. the U.S. culture has changed changed him or her in a positive way. So that kind of like worked as a driving force to the student. So uh, to apply for the YES program and to get interested in the YES program as well. So after the promotion, the preliminary application was open, people uh, applied and from there we have sorted out uh, the successful uh, applications where all the, the applicants actually met all the uh, requirements that they need to apply for the YES program. And then we had a five minute phone interview with every single uh, successful uh, applicants. And in that phone interview, we tried to uh, we tried to see that whether that applicant is um, was actually with how how interested that applicant was uh, uh, in the to that they have applied to the YES program, uh, whether uh, whether somebody else uh, completed the forms for them or they genuinely got interested, how they get to know about the YES program. And we asked a few general knowledge questions about the culture and about the country so that we know that, okay, they know uh, something about their country. They know something about their culture. Um, so that when they go uh, to the YES program, they, they know what they're representing. They know their country, they know their culture. After the five minute phone interview, um, we had uh, the LTS test and the in-class essay. Uh, in that test, um, they had certain. Um, they had we we tested their uh, English English writing abilities, and um, also we tested their English reading and listening abilities. Um, and after that, we had the final application and interview process. So they had to complete their final application, and after the final application, uh, we had we had their interviews uh, done at the American Center. So we did that with the with collaboration with the American Center. Um, in the final interview process, um, the interview was divided into two segments. One was a group interview, where there was a panel. Uh, there, the panelists there were like three or four mem member panels, um, panelists, and they were 
YES program uh, alumni members and also American Center officials. Uh, so they made a panel and in that panel, uh, we called students in groups. So there were like five or four in a group. Um, in that uh, group interview phase, they, we, we saw like how they perform in a group. Uh, we gave them a topic. Uh, it can be, we gave them varieties of topic. I think one of the topics was, okay, what do you support? Uh, love marriage or arranged marriage? Why? So since arranged marriage is a big thing in, uh, culturally in my country. So um, that was one of the, one, an example of a question. So, um, uh, so we saw how they performed in a group interview. And then for the individual interviews, um, we had uh, the American Center staff members, um, iron, uh, uh, iron uh, representative, and also a YES program, yes program representative in the, in the panel. And they uh, called each inter interviewee in person, and then they um, had an official a very one-to-one -one interview uh, with, with them. And all these processes, uh, they, we, could, we could finish them by January 2018 this year. So that was uh, one of the achievements as well, that we could finish it so fast uh, because the process was digitalized. So for the preparation of the PDOs after the selection process was done, um, um, Thank you, Gloria. Yeah, this, num this year we had a record number of um, applications. We received a record number of applications. Um, so for the video preparations, what we did is um, we, first of all, we organized a TOT for the, for the trainers who are going to go and uh, be with the students and, uh, and, and, and try to, um, <laughs> and try to, uh, um, mix with the students, understand the student psychology, and also share their experiences. Uh, the TOT was needed because the alumni, most of the alumni members, they don't have that um, uh, teaching skill, but they do have the presentation skill, but because they went to the US and they did a lot of presentation. And presentations and teaching, they kind of like go uh, together. So uh, we had to, uh, bring them and uh, give them specific instructions about uh, what are the information that we are going to focus on and what are the information we are not going to focus on, uh, what are the things that are um, emphasized in DCOs, um, and uh, what are the feature, what are the aspects that we should tell from our side because probably they're not uh, included in the DCOs or maybe this is very cultural, very um, uh, specific to our, our own culture. So we needed the TOT and um, uh, I have uh, been to, uh, I have participated in the DCOs two times back in 2015 and 16. So I have uh, experiences of those two years and um, another fellow alumni member, uh, Shudha, she went last year uh, in the DCO and uh, she's also going this year as well. So we actually collaborated and we devised a, a, devised a, a, a syllabus a curriculum for the students so that we can, we, we know like, okay, so what, uh, what should we focus on and uh, what have we seen in our experience that the students struggle uh, to understand um, during their DCO. So considering those in mind, we, we arranged that TOT and this, this time it was a three days TOT. And after the TOT, uh, when we felt that the students were, the uh, alumni instructors were um, ready, they did their demo classes. They uh, took their demo classes and um, once everybody was certified, certified, um, we, um, moved on with the logistics uh, and this time the PDO was a residential PDO like last time as well. Uh, so we had um, a facility um, um, uh, rented and the students went there, stayed there for the PDO days uh, overnight and they bonded there and um, they had lots of opportunity to ask us questions um, and we talked about 
almost almost everything that we can think of um, during those uh, PDOs, and they had fun as well. So we wanted to keep it as uh, we did not want to be um, uh, enforcing things and uh, you know injecting things into their heads. Um, we just wanted them to learn naturally. We just wanted to um, give them a relaxed time, and then at the same time, where we it's kind of like a counseling we we kind of did a counseling uh, session sessions with them so that they understand what we're talking about and they understand uh, why americans think certain things in a certain way and why do they think about certain things in a certain way and what is the influence of culture in those we also took into account the yes word book and yes handbook and we have focused on them as well and the classes that we take you can see the picture on the top right corner that they felt very comfortable. They were sitting on the floor. We gave them enough uh, freedom. And um, they, we did not tie them up, and which is why they felt comfortable. And then they asked questions, and they, then they learned. Um, and we, we tried to have a very comprehensive um, a PDO so that nothing is missed. So from digital storytelling, to uh, to all the yes program rules and the state department rules, the J one rules, everything we covered everything. And uh, other than other than the PDO, we also did the enhancement pro enhancement um, uh, uh, enhancement project uh, with them, the enhancement program, uh, where we tried to. Um, we ask them to do certain projects. We ask them to do uh, come up with certain ideas, certain, certain plans. Um, we ask them to do presentations. And in their enhancement activity, they um, came up with a project and then they did it. Um, so, so that was another thing that we are very proud of um, when it comes to this year's um, uh, this year's uh, participants, this year's scholars. Not that we're not proud of the other scholars, we are proud of all of them. But this year, uh, it, was, it was, I would say, a very holistic, a very um, a complete PDO, I would say, um, when, it, when it comes to quality and uh, when it comes to all the resources that we had. So now coming to the alumni um, aspect of it, um, Yes, Alumni Bangladesh, I think they do a lot of projects. They do a lot, a lot of projects. Um, we have uh, 345 alumni members, including the recent uh, batch that arrived. Um, and and this, this, this month, uh, we did, uh, this, uh, this year, we have already done um, dozens, dozens of projects. Um, we have done tech solutions to socioeconomic problem in Dinaspur. We have done illuminating minds. We have done self-defense and health awareness workshops. And you can see that these are not only focused in the capital, Dhaka, but it was also, um, um, we have also done it in other parts of the country. And uh, the Illuminating Minds projects that you can see here on the top right corner, these are done by the current um, scholars who are still here, who hasn't left the country yet. So during their enhancement activities, they, have came, they came up with their projects, uh, project ideas, and, and they came to us and they're like, okay, we want to do this to the, to, uh, for, the, for, the, uh, for the kids. And, and we helped them, and, and they did, we helped them in terms of uh, uh, monitoring the project and uh, giving them the right direction. But they executed everything, they planned everything, they came to the office, they used the iron facility, and then they uh, uh, executed it nicely. And, and this is particularly why I said, like, I'm very proud of this, this year's uh, students. We also did project revival then um, uh, in Silet. We did, um, uh, the, the teacher training uh, the teacher training project in Dinashpur, uh, where uh, many yes yes uh, alumni members were present. We did uh, not her fault, which is uh, a very good project and had a very good traction around the world um, in 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 Silet. And uh, currently, the the project that is going on is Code for Freedom in Silet. Um, where the women, uh, where one of our recent uh, returnee is um, uh, helping the uh, women of Silet to, to learn about technology. So uh, these are the projects that we have done um, in, in Bangladesh. And um, to celebrate the 15 year anniversary, we have actually done, organized uh, 15 different projects in one month, in the month of April. 
uh, in, and also like celebrating the GYST. Um, and there is another record. This is the highest number of projects conducted in one month in the history of Yesterday in Bangladesh. So you can see that we are on a, uh, we are on a good streak. We are breaking all the records. Um, um, uh, the, we, we, we keep it as a practice to do at least one project every month. Um, and we try to include uh, as many participants as we can uh, when we're doing them. Uh, the longest running project in Bangladesh uh, is Small Foot. And I, I, I will give uh, 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 Prince uh, an opportunity at some point um, uh, to talk about Small Foot uh, and how it started and why it is a very uh, important project for ESL in Bangladesh. Um, and uh, the other project that were, were, uh, and the, the, another thing about small food is that small food is not just one project, but the small food is also kind of like a working ground for the for the alumni members as well. Whenever the alumni members come back to Bangladesh and they don't know what to do, we always we always try to in, uh, uh, direct them to our small food and say like, okay, so we have we already have these people a uh, running project going on. So anytime you want to jump in, um, jump in and help out and. Um, we also in, involve small food kids to other projects, and uh, Prince will will be talking about them um, after after this presentation and uh, when I when I when I give him give him the floor. Um, during the the Yes program started in Bangladesh back in two thousand three, and uh, we have the number here six hundred seventy four, almost seven hundred applications that we have received um, out of eight divisions. Uh, of Bangladesh, we have covered eight of them. So we have covered the whole Bangladesh when it comes to promote, promoting YES program. So more schools and more students and more citizens now know about YES program uh, than ever. Uh, there was social media coverage and for the social media coverage since Bangladesh is actually one of the highest ranking Facebook user uh, country. So uh, we have dedicated a social media team during our, uh, during our promotion period uh, so that they can uh, regularly update the posts and they can also do the countdown of like, okay, 10 days remaining until the deadline is over. Please submit your application now. Uh, we did different events and we have, we have uploaded those events, uh, the pictures of those events so that other, uh, other, um, so that uh, people people can see that this is not not just uh, for Dhaka oriented students, but also for all the rural uh, kids of Bangladesh as well. So anybody can apply, although it's a highly prestigious program, but anybody can apply for that if they meet the requirements. Uh, we have also uh, done some mainstream news coverage, so especially in the local and the national dailies, um, so that uh, the parents. Uh, and the working class people who read newspapers, they are also, uh, they also know about the YES program. Um, so that was, that was it. Um, I, would, I would like to ask uh, Gloria to ask the poll questions um, to everybody. Great, so we have the question here, what is the biggest challenge when it comes to placing Bangladeshi students? Our options are religion, facial hair, hijab, social media activity, dietary restrictions, and other. So if everybody would like to please vote. Uh, and I think it would be also helpful in the chat box if some of you could share with us some resources that would help with placement and to, against these challenges. I know one example is that we often get requests for male students to take pictures without their facial hair. Uh, so if you all have some other examples of, you know, maybe smiling photos, um, statements or voice clips from the students that the team can help prepare to help with placement, um, that would be tremendously helpful as well. If you also want to speak a little bit with your mics, you can just please raise your hands and we will give you the mic um, to speak about maybe the other challenges you face or if you also want to share some stories from your perspective as well. Great, so we have about half the group that voted. 
We'll just wait a little bit longer for a few more votes. And we see that Juliet shared that in regards to pictures, host families prefer smiling photos as profile pictures as opposed to their formal picture. That's great to know. Yeah. Munif, so it looks like with the poll, we have about 71% saying that the dietary restrictions are the biggest challenge, religion being the next at 14%, and then we have two other people who chose other. If you wanna share a little bit about your choice, uh, that would be helpful for us as well. Munif or the team, do you wanna talk a little bit about dietary restrictions or religion um yeah i would i would like to know the uh, two persons opinions on the other like what other problems do you face um if that is possible great uh, <laughs> Juliet, would you mind sharing what some of the other challenges are for the PA? Okay, well, I will pass you the mic. Hey everyone, I put um, other simply because it's it was the profile pictures that they prefer smiling as opposed to the the serious formal photo. I think um, there's a lot of negative media in, in the U.S. Um, and I think that that might um, sway some host families to not be open to hosting. We, we do a lot of training with host families and field staff as, as far as the religion piece and the food piece, so that's not as much as a is a um, issue. It's just more like the initial um, scene of the student that looks just very serious. All right. Thank you, Juliet. Um, I can see Carrie Anderson. Um, I chose other, though it is related to the religion. From my experience supporting students and host families on program, host families have reported that they feel um, male have sometimes treated fa female family member differently in a way that has been difficult for host families and students to navigate. Um, is it possible for you to like elaborate on that? Like, well. I think uh, from what I'm understanding is that sometimes students have different expectations of gender roles and that affects the way that they interact with their host family members and the gender that might be, which is uncomfortable for American families. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, um, yeah, so uh, first of all, religion. Um, I'm just sharing, Thank you. All right. So I'm just sharing uh, my and my team members' experiences as well. Uh, I would I would say like um, uh, please jump in. Feel free to jump in anytime you want to jump in. Um, um, about the religion. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the dietary restrictions. So it has. We have seen that oftentimes um, the students write that they have they are following the religion islam and in their application form because we all have to go through this process um, in a country where the majority of the people are muslims if you are not a muslim you are treated differently um, and also when you are a muslim you have certain dietary restrictions that means you cannot eat pork 
um, you cannot eat eat meat that are uh, animals that are slaughtered in a non-Islamic way, uh, which we call like haram or halal, that dilemma. Um, so uh, for those re uh, reasons, this religion and the dietary restric restrictions, these two are uh, very closely connected to each other. So when they're writing their application form, they're writing their religion as Islam, they're writing their dietary restrictions as Islam suggests that they, they have, unless they have allergy uh, or other medical reasons for them. But once they go to the US, um, and I have seen that the Bangladeshi students, and I, I'm pretty sure Gloria um, and Megan, they would, they would also agree. Um, ha, oh, by the way, hi Megan, how are you doing? Um, so, so we have seen that Bangladeshi students, oftentimes, um, they, they, they go through a change. They learn from the American culture, and sometimes they adopt a different um, um, uh, philosophy about life, about religion. They adopt uh, a different uh, dietary restriction. For example, I, when I went to the US as a, as a young exchange student, I was very scared of all these dietary restrictions, and I knew that oh, I, I follow this religion, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna I'm not gonna have I'm not gonna not gonna touch those meat because those are not slaughtered properly. And I had all these like restrictions in my head. But when once I went there and I saw people doing things in a certain way, so I remember uh, when in Rome do as the Romans do. So I I tried to do that, and I believe that all these exchange students they go through the same process, and. This year, what we have particularly um, seen during our PDOs, because we get, get to spend time uh, with these students and we, we saw them from a very close proximity, uh, we have seen that these students um, are very, very uh, liberal uh, when, they, when it comes to their, uh, uh, when it comes to dietary restrictions, when it comes to religion. And they're more accepting to other religion. Um, there may be one or two students who regularly prays uh, like five times a day, and they're very strict about their uh, religious practices. But at the same time, they understand very well that where they're going, uh, they can they will have zero expectations for, uh, when it comes to whether they can practice, whether they can pray five times a day because they'll be in school, they'll be attending other clubs. Um, so those things have been made so clear to them that if, if uh, after all these things, they, they um, I would not use the word disappoint us, but if they say, if they act otherwise, I would say that we have established that ground that if you contact us, we can also communicate with them and remind them, or also you can also remind them that what did you learn in your PDO? You have agreed to certain things and you have acted in a certain way um, when, when it came to uh, these restrictions that you, that, that, that you were talking about. Um, when they completed their form, of course, they will put those things because they are supposed to. But as they go to the US, they're they're very flexible in terms of religion, pra religious practices and dietary restrictions. So I think those two things, um, which you said that you faced the problem when you were talking to the host, potential host families, I think you can confidently say that the students, 99% of the time, when they come to the, to the States and they meet their host family, they go to churches, and, and they go to other religious institutions, and then they learn about uh, different, different religion. They are very flexible when it comes to their religious practices, religious beliefs, and their um, uh, philosoph uh, philosophies, and also um, with their dietary restrictions. They are having McDonald's all the time, uh, and McDonald's meat is not halal meat, but does that mean that they're not having it? Does it mean they're not having um, uh, going to you know, Hard Rock Cafe and other places and having food, they're having it. So um, what their applications say oftentimes don't represent um, a, a rigid person. It represents that this person is from a particular culture and in that culture, that is the norm. And who, which is why the American families are 
taking these students so that they can learn about them and also it's, it's a mutual teaching and learning process so that both of them both of them both of them can learn from each other so um i can see another uh, comment uh, comment in here yep as a problem um, I meant that uninformed inexper inexperienced hosts are worried about it it is helpful to hear these details as it gives us in the field much more specific that we can use to reassure the potential host yeah that's great I hope it is, it is really helpful because yeah Munif as a staff member and alum himself knows that uh, the students are trained and they do become very, very flexible and they know to be independent and realistic about their expectations as it depends on the host. Um, we also have a comment saying that it's important for the album photos to feature students participating in activities they love at home or in the community, school and with friends or family. That's great. So more group activity photos with lots of big smiles. All right. So, okay. So um, I would, yeah, I, I agree with uh, Brukenna. And okay, so this this is also something that I have faced personally, and I'm pretty sure many of the yes students have faced as well. Um, in 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 our country, culturally, um, photography was something that came a lot later in our country. Um, um, and, and back at that time, photography was very expensive. So you needed to go to a studio and then you needed to get your photos done, photos developed and uh, taken and developed. So there was this one shot because they, they had film cameras. So they had this one shot to take pictures, even in the family events. So nobody wanted to look um, not ready when they took uh, uh, when, they, when they had their pictures taken. So culturally, it has established as a norm that when we take photographs, uh, we tend to be very serious about it and we don't show our teeth when we're taking photographs. Um, so <clears throat> we are slowly getting out of that trend because now we have digital cameras. Uh, now we are taking selfies all the time. So it, is, it, is, it, has been, it has been changing, but when it comes to an application form, uh, in, in their psychology, it works as, oh, this is a formal thing. So they kind of like tend to give more formal photographs. Uh, we, we try to tell them again and again that, that the potential host families are gonna see these things. They don't wanna see your serious face. They, they wanna see your happy face, that you are doing stuff, whatever you, whatever you love. You, 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 are, you are playing with your pet if you have one. Um, so those are the things that we try to emphasize and I believe that we need to work on that more and probably highlight them somewhere uh, before they send us uh, their final application form so that they know um, from early on that okay so we need to focus on that because this is Iron BD is focusing on this on this uh, uh, photograph this much that maybe we should not be sending those uh, serious looking pictures um, um, anymore. So uh, we will work on that and I, I'm pretty sure my team members are writing these things down. And, and also, do you have any question about the pets? Yeah, do, do you or anyone else from the team wanna share a little bit about pet norms in Bangladesh and how much experience students might have with family pets? So since, again, the religion comes up, uh, since we are an Islamic country, uh, dogs and pigs are considered as unclean. Uh, it is said that if there is a dog in the room, you cannot pray in there because all the angels suddenly disappear uh, from there. So. Um, so um, I would say um, that is something um, 
when it comes to pets because um, in America we have a lot of a lot of families who have um, dogs as their pets. Uh, in my family, they kept the dogs separated from my room. Although at, after a certain point, I was cool with that. So our our pet dog came to our room all the time. Her name was Abby. So Abby came all the time. She even slept with me in, in my in my bed. And I know that many yes students they fall in love with animals. Um, I know many alumni members, recent returnees, um, they are crazy for cats, they're crazy for dogs. It's just their patterns, the natural patterns, they don't allow animals in their, in their, in their homes, and which is why they are very really sad because they, they fell in love with the pets. So I think, I think that is also something that you can, um, even though people say that, oh, um, or even the religion says that okay, dog is not allowed. Um, most of our students they fall in love with dog with pets, and um, um, and um, after they come back, they, we see a completely different person. Um, yeah, and they also have the pet meeting session. Yeah, I I, I was lucky to be in one of those, and um, Megan probably organized that. And I, there was a partner, and I love that partner dog. I don't know whether. That dog is still there. All right. So I would ask um, before we take more questions from the, the part participants today, I would ask um, my team members to add anything if they have anything to add, and I would ask them to also uh, elaborate on the small food project because this is such a such a um, such an important project for us. Okay, hello everybody. So small food, we started this in 2013 and uh, five years have passed till now and uh, it's a great place for the alumni and the new students to learn. This year the new students visited small food and they learned how the uh, underprivileged uh, students are there and this gives them more insights about the culture of Bangladesh and we also uh, started a lab uh, in uh, in small food where they can access internet and uh, learn about technology and programming and stuff. And we also started a recent project, Molda Clay, uh, where we uh, go to different schools and teach the students on morals, young ethics, kids. young kids, and creativity. So that's that's something we we have been working on. So basically, the idea is to encourage the yes alumni and the yes scholars to work with the children. And since the, that is the most important uh, time when they can learn and we wanted to uh, get uh, all these values and education in their head um, uh, right when they're forming it and molding it. Yes, exactly. And um, uh, hello everyone. Um, in, <clears throat> in addition to that, I wanted to ask, um, I wanted to add something um, about the the whole historical, uh, the historical idea that the Bangladeshi students have in comparison to uh, the Pakistani students. I understand there was an, uh, there was a slight incident about some sort of a misunderstanding last year, uh, some sort of a social media rift between uh, two of our students, like one from Bangladesh and uh, one from Pakistan, regarding this. But um, so we do have, we did have um, extensive sessions during our PDOs. And um, just separate sessions just for this because uh, we made them understand that history is different in its narratives based on region. And so, so the Pakistanis are taught a different, different version of the history and the Bangladeshis are given a different perspective. So maybe because of that, but I really hope and we're sincere uh, about it that from this year on after the video, um, definitely they will try to be um, they will try to not bring up those topics. Um, it, it happens in DCO sometimes. It may happen with a uh, Pakistani student placed uh, in a nearby location. But yeah, um, everything else, it's everything else um, other than this, everything is uh, focused. So we want to make them more compatible with the US culture and more flexible while adapting new cultures. Okay, so also regarding the smiling photo, uh, we are going. We have uh, sessions regarding social media and Facebook activities and everything. So we will definitely encourage them to uh, put 
photos that are and that where they're smiling and yeah Yes, we also have a great question asking about what constitutes a successful application. Uh, I think Munif went ahead and he shared the eligibility criteria off of the website. But do you all want to talk a little bit more about like in the interview and in your group interviews, what are some traits of excellent, strong applicants that you're looking for that makes you know that this student is a good fit and will be successful on the YES program? So if I may, if I may take the floor, uh, thank you, Gloria. So um, primarily, what we look for in a successful yes candidate is the sense of self. One must know themselves and be able to represent him or herself. Um, so obviously, that means that person is outspoken as well and not overcrowded by his or her shyness. And um, in addition to that, um, grades are also very important. Academic performance in addition to all the extracurricular activities one has, uh, one has taken part in. And at the end of the day, since this is a cultural exchange program, we make that very um, clear right from the very beginning that they have to understand two things. The first being that since this is, a, this is going to be a cultural exchange, that person has to be open-minded and flexible regarding this. And uh, so therefore, adapting to a new situation or change, even if it's difficult, may, may keep in communication as the key and working through the challenges. And the second one, um, and the second one that we wanted to discuss was about um, the, the, amount of, the amount of extracurricular activities uh, uh, that one does. One, um, so a uh, yes student is given the opportunity that, so we tell them that this is a non-degree program as by the State Department. So therefore they, someone should understand that they should not bargain or try to pressurize uh, the host family, the local coordinator, the placement organization, and the school uh, itself for a diploma or um, being placed in 12th grade. So these are, these are, the, these are the primary criteria that, that we focus on uh, to see that if a student is understanding and willing to take this year more as a chance rather than a loss of a year um, and to get something, get something, um, some academic benefit out of it rather than that, but rather to take the experience and have a positive experience and bring it back and share it with the culture. So, that's, so that basically sums up what we look for in a candidate. Great. That's awesome. Thank you. I know we're closing in on our hour. Does anyone else have any last minute questions they do want to ask or perhaps some stories of some great Bangladeshi matched host families you want to share with the team? I have another question for the team actually. Can you talk about some of the holidays during the academic year that Bangladeshi students might particularly miss or that they would enjoy celebrating with their host families? Oh, are you guys there? I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh, great. We have a comment from Nancy, and she said, I hosted Talat, and he will live forever in our home. He left a year ago, and my kids say almost daily still that they miss him very much. Oh, that's great. Yeah, Talat is a great student from Bangladesh, and it's, it's so nice to hear that we have you know, oh, a full host mom here who had the opportunity to host him. Wonderful. If there are no other questions, oh. great. And Megan said, thank you to everyone for your time, and since Ramadan, we'll be 
in the academic year now, how are the students going to be prepared to celebrate and share Ramadan with their host families and communities? Munich, rest of the team. Um, um, although um, most of the students this year are not practicing Muslims, but a couple of them or a few of them are. So I'm pretty sure that they're gonna um, share the values that they believe in. Uh, they're going to share like why Ramadan is important, what is the uh, significance of this month, why do they fast. So, uh, and also there are some cultural, um, um, the, some traditional um, practices that they do, uh, like some uh, from starting from food to um, the special prayers that they do. And um, so I think, I think, and, and the Eid afterwards, after the one month of fasting, when they celebrate the Eid, um, I think that's their, that's what they're all looking for, uh, to share the joy of this festival and the food that they have during the Eid time, the new clothes that they wear, or the traditional, like, really, uh, the religious attires that they wear, and um, how, what they do, the stories, because Eid is all about, like, um, meeting, it's like Christmas, so, the family members they meet, they talk, they say, they tell stories to each other. Uh, it's kind of like a, 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 a feast, you know? So, yeah. Thank you, Megan. Yeah, that's great. And Wasi and team are saying that it's definitely a great idea to consider having an eat celebration for their upcoming students. And I'm sure they themselves have a lot of ideas. Uh, for how they might be able to celebrate with their community. So if you bring it up to them, I'm sure it will be happily received. Before we wrap up with any comments or last minute questions, I do want to remind everybody that uh, we have so many stories about wonderful Bangladeshi students and alumni on the YES website at yesprograms.org. Sometimes we have too many that we have to slim them down. We also have a lot of great posts and pictures, um, especially with Bangladesh, we have a lot of great videos on the Yes Facebook, on the Yes Instagram, which is yes.program, and on Twitter, Yes Program News. Uh, the students are actually also trained to use our hashtags, uh, K hashtag KLYES and hashtag Yes Alumni. So this is a great way for you all to get a lot of great content with Bangladeshi staff, students, and alumni. So we hope you're uh, able to check out some of those resources. And please do let us know if there's any other way that we can best support the field who are doing all of the groundwork to students. Um, uh, before we, are we, are we ending this uh, session? I think we're just, uh, we hit a little over an hour, so I think we are gonna wrap up soon. All right. So. Uh, before you wrap up, like we we had, uh, we have taken uh, a, a picture together so yes. we can share. <laughs> so we thought that after the poll question, uh, we're gonna share with you uh, a picture that we have taken because we have been, we were in the office after 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 the office hour today. So we thought that. Oh, this is fun after after work photo shoot. So we thought that we we're gonna say hi to all the LCs and the POs for working so hard to place our students, um, and and like they're doing a, doing a tremendous job. So we want to thank them for what they're doing. We want to thank American councils. We want to thank um, the Yes program staff members, the Iron staff members, and also. Um, the LCs, the people who are in the field and who, who are actually going there. And I know like how difficult it is to convince people to let a complete stranger from a complete different continent to stay with them. Uh, and it must be so challenging. I sell products to people and I, I find it, I mean, these are good products. And, and what they're doing is they're, they're trying to convince people who don't know about 
about about any any anything about Bangladesh, anything about these students, like how they are, what they're. So it's a very difficult job, and we all thank them, and and we we are so grateful to them. And thank you, thank you. I cannot thank you more. Thank you very much for this. Really, really, thank you. Well, thank you all so much for all the wonderful things that you all do for us. And please, at any point, if you have any questions, please do let us know. We're always here to answer. And also, would like to share more stories about our students, how they're doing in your community. So feel free to send us uh, emails or like let us know anyhow that how our students are doing and where they can uh, make themselves better. And thank you for listening to us. And thank you. Yes, thank you so much for everybody uh, for participating and for making the time to learn just a little bit more about our team. We appreciate, as Munif and the team so earnestly said, all that you do. And we hope that you all have a great day. Thanks, everyone.